Hello all and welcome to the next video here on the Indian Man's Rooftop to the Cal Caravan of Treasure. Sometimes bar to the street continues as you know it always will. So apologies, I'm gonna try to straighten this out just a little bit here. Woo! Okay. Anyway, uh, we are back with another uh, Be Kind Retro Rewind. Um, finally got enough games to kind of put together a video game episode. So really excited for that, and then we're just going to kind of roll through it here. I got three different stores, all three from different cities. Uh, well, no, not all three. Two of them from the same city and one from a different city. I picked up this red bag and this white bag, both in Lubbock, Texas. I picked up this pink bag in, or I, whoa, I, backwards. Red bag and white bag were Dallas, Texas. Pink bag is Lubbock, Texas. Um, so... Uh, yeah, cool. Let's check it out. Um, some good, some bad, and some what the hell. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go into uh, the good, definitely the good, uh, in all of this. And we're going to go here. And actually, this probably is three different Dallas, Texas stores, because I think I put one store stuff in this bag. Uh, so I went to Found It Electronics. And that's where I found a couple of these games. And then uh, the other two I actually found somewhere else that I'll go into detail here. Oh uh, yeah, so these two. So the two games I actually found at Founded Electronics were Call of Cthulhu for the Xbox and uh, Warhammer Death Watch for PS4. I've been getting really big into the Warhammer stuff. I really like Dark Tide. Um, I've always liked the Vermintide stuff, kind of similar, but in a different setting. Uh, I think Dark Tide is way better. Um, I was always a decent fan of the War, uh, Space Marine game. Uh, I think I played that on PS3 back in the day. <laughs> Can't remember. Either way, a lot more Warhammer I want to explore, but seeing this definitely picked it up. Um, they have an always, like, an all-the-time deal where, uh, well, I already opened up Death Watch and was playing it, so it's not on here. But, um, pink tag games are buy one, get one free. So, um, yeah, I, I think Call of Cthulhu was 10 This was 8 bucks. So, pay 10 bucks for both of them. Um, I actually, I've actually played this Call of Cthulhu game before on the PlayStation 4. Um, but I, if, I don't know. I wanted to kind of play through it again, and I saw it there and thought, eh, that'll work. And Death Watch, I just... I never played the original Death Watch, so uh, I've heard solid things about this kind of PS4 remake or remaster. I don't know what you want to call it, but excited to see how it turns out. So there's that. Um, and then, again, I guess there were three stores in Dallas because I just remembered these. Um, I picked both of these up from... It's actually the same store I get my loose figures from. Um, sorry, let me fix that. I don't know why it keeps moving. Um... I get most of my like loose figures or retro figures from a place in Dallas called Dallas Vintage Toys. And they have like a very small video game section. Most of the times that I've been there, there's never been anything. But this time they actually had two games I went ahead and picked up. And uh, these were also on a weird like little sale. So they were essentially buy one, get one 50% off. Um, and so I picked up Shadow Man for the N64. And I picked up War Gods. Uh, so, you know, a little over 20 bucks for two games. Thought that was a cool deal, so sure. Um, I got this in addition to some of the toys I got. I actually showed off the toys I got there. I got that loose Jimmy Hart and that loose um, Sebastian Stan Winter Soldier Marvel Legends figure. Um, but I've never played Shadow Man, um, although I've always wanted to because I've heard it's one of the better comic book like adaptation video games. Um at least it has a lot of fans. I don't know if I can say it's a better one. But yeah, if you're not familiar with Shadow Man, he's a big thing uh, for, is it Valiant Comics now? Was he always Valiant Comics? I don't know. But uh, Shadow Man for the N64. And then the other one is War Gods. War Gods, I didn't even know there was a console port of War Gods till much later. Um, I think it was just a few years ago I found out that this was actually ported to consoles. And I'd been looking for the cart ever since. Uh, I remember playing it as a um, arcade cabinet, and it's just a god awful 3D fighter like Tekken, 
like it's it's kind of like Killer Instinct. That's probably the best way I can describe it. It's got a very Killer Instinct vibe, but with like 3D graphics. Um, and it was horrible. And I've heard the console ports no better, if not worse. But I've also heard it's kind of like one of those hidden gems. And it's a childhood staple of mine. So I got a physical copy of War Gods. Um, okay. So that's the positives there. Um, and these all are work. The uh, I trust um, Foundit Electronics um, quite a bit. So I'm okay with that. And uh, the guy at Dallas Adventure T Toys actually let me test these out to make sure they worked. So that was pretty cool of him. Um, now on to some bat. The white bat. Next to where, uh, when I go to Dallas and I visit my brother, next to where he lives, there's a little, like, outlet mall. And there's a couple of really cool stores there. I got a, um, I think a while back I showed off some Funkos I got. They were like the um, Altered Beast one, the Fallout one, and the uh, Gentleman Claptrap. Now, you know what, actually, because uh, it's right next to me, they, get, they gave me the free Colossus fig pen or whatever. Um, anyway, in that same area, there was like a kind of local little mom and pop-ish. I don't, it wasn't mom and pop. Uh, I think it was a, a game exchange, which I see in a lot of places in Texas. Uh, I've seen a lot in Dallas. I've seen a couple in Lubbock. Uh, so game exchange. Um and this game exchange was a little bit unique. In most game exchanges, I feel like I either find very overpriced retro games that they're like selling even more than other places, like price-wise, um, or I just find a bunch of sports games nobody wants. This one was different. I actually found some things. Yes, they are sports games, but they're ones I hadn't seen at like other game exchanges. So I went ahead and I picked them up, and it's just a miserable experience. So fair warning. I've played all of these already, and I'll explain how I played them in a minute, because I've just been cursed with a couple of these games. The only game that actually booted up for me and played and was perfectly fine was, let me just make sure here, was this copy of MLB 17 The Show. Now, I actually had this game before. Um, I'm a big King Griffey Jr. fan. And I didn't really have very many baseball games, so I went ahead and got this one when it came out. I had like the steel case that looked like his looked like the white Seattle Mariner jersey, uh, but I got rid of it a long time ago because I just I mean I don't keep a lot of sports games. Um, I mean I do, but I don't. I keep a lot of the older ones I loved when I was a kid, but I don't get a lot of modern games. But they had this, and it was three dollars. So and it, it's in perfect shape. It's a PS4 Blu-ray. You know what you get. Now this is where I had severe problems. And I didn't really think about it until after. I, I literally just kind of took the guy's his word. Like, well, we test everything that comes in and all this and that. Okay, cool. Because most times I've never had a bad experience with secondhand game stores. However, both of these games were just dog water experiences. Um, Tiger Woods PGA Tour for the PSP and NBA 2K11. And what's funny is I've bought both of these games before. I've actually bought, I think, three different NBA 2K11s. And I think uh, I ended up buying another Tiger Woods game. So, like, for some reason, I am cursed with these two games. This one first. Check it out. I didn't even check to think until, like, I was already back here home. Hours away. Because I just, I trusted the guy. It was like a good faith type of, you know, trust or whatever. Um... But it's got, I don't know if you could tell, right around here, a giant crack in the disc. And it would not load. And it would not load. And it's one of those things where, like, I can't just drive all the way back and take it back. I guess I could hold on to it and hopefully take it back. But I think they have, like, a 30-day return policy or something. So too late. Uh, didn't work. Ended up having to buy another one. Ooh. Um, I ended up buying another cut. Sorry, that's like how it's, I'm scared of taking it in and out of the case because of that. Uh, it didn't work anyway, so who gives a shit? But um, I ended up ordering another version of this game and had the same damn problem. It had a crack on the disc. I don't know what it is. The two worst offenders of this are the PS2... And the Xbox 360. Not even the original Xbox I've never had this problem with. But for some reason, every once in a while, I get a PS2 game that's either cracked in the middle 
or I get an Xbox 360 game that has a crack on it, and I don't get it. Like, uh, yeah, anyway, I finally picked up a third copy of this game. I found it in my own GameStop where I live. I guess that somebody had traded in a bunch of games, and this was one of them, and I picked it up. I asked the dude if I could look at it first. It looked pretty normal. It was It was a little scratched up. But I was like, at least there's no cracks. I bought it, and I was finally able to play NBA 2K11 because I didn't all those years ago. But I had to go through three different copies of this game. So this one doesn't work. The one I have up on my shelf now finally does, even though it's scratched up. But at least it doesn't have any cracks, and it'll play. The PSP game here is a little bit of a different case. I noticed this pretty quickly when I uh, first took it out of the thing. And you'll notice it, too, because it's really bad. When PSP games do this. Um, again, I just looked at it in the case like, oh, okay, cool, everything's good, you know. Just good faith on this small, smaller business, smaller than GameStop business, whatever you want to call it. Secondhand store, right? I come and and I get I get that. Trying to get it out. Um and it just turns out it's like that. It's just it's it's open on top and I tried to play it in my PSP, and I got it to boot up once because when it opens up like that, it's hard to get it back properly on the track. And it's also like kind of indented here where it looks like it got pushed or stepped on, and it just would not play. I Like I said, it took me multiple tries just to get it to even boot up, and then it like crashed because it couldn't read the disc anymore. Um, so a wasted Tiger Woods game. Sadly. Now, this is where the fun part comes in. That's all the Dallas, Texas stuff. This store, this whatever, I think it was a game exchange. I could be wrong that it was not a game exchange, but this store, um, I hate to say it, but that store can go fuck itself. Um, now back to the good. Okay. This stuff I picked up in Lubbock, Texas. Uh, there's a record store there that I like. It's like a second-hand record movie video game store. It's One half of it is nothing but records and CDs. It's amazing. Um, and then the other half of it is all second-hand games. Like, it's pretty much all second-hand DVDs and Blu-rays. But then there's like one or two aisles of old games, and that's where I got these. Um, and actually, I picked up another thing because they got a wall of like kind of like console extra stuff. Uh, console accessories, basically. So I picked up something like that, too. But this is where I got really lucky. Hey, just check out that store. I don't know if the receipt's in here or not. Um, if you're ever in Lubbock, Texas, check out Ralph's Records. Um, I'm not going to give out their full address or anything because I don't know what they're like on publicity. But Ralph's Records in Lubbock, Texas, that whole store is just a vibe. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, I don't have a record player, but going in there multiple times over the year makes me wish I had a record player sometimes. Just the amount of stuff that's there that they have, like, on sale. Like, get five records for $5, and you can just pick what you want, almost. It's amazing. Um, anyways, their video game section is not the greatest, but uh, every so often when I go, or more often than not, I don't find anything. But every so often, I do find a few things, and this is pretty cool. First thing, just to kind of patty along here with the... Uh, Tiger Woods thing. <coughs> I got another one. <coughs> and I put this one in my PSP and it worked fine. So, no issues. I bought another one. It was eight bucks. Um, Yeah, like no, none of that separation, none of that like indention on the glass. Popped it in my PSP. It worked fine um, multiple times. So yeah, had to get another copy of this when I saw it, and, which was great because I was thinking about just ordering it, but saw it there. Not as cheap. I paid eight bucks as compared to four ninety five. But I mean, it is what it is. So I'm not too worried about it. But. Um, the next things I kind of got were, uh, oh yeah, I forgot all about this. This is cool. Um, I picked up Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare, the first one, which is great because in a different video game video I am going to make, 
I think I picked up Plants vs. Zombies too. I could be wrong. Um, I used to play Plants vs. Zombies on my phone and I liked it. But I thought it'd be cool to finally have like an actual copy of it. It's in pretty solid shape. Uh, most of their games were. Um, and I've bought from them before. A few scratches there on the bottom, but nothing too bad. And I bought from them before and they're usually always good. I don't think I've ever had a problem with any games I've ever gotten from there. So yeah. The next one was kind of a low-key... In my opinion, Hidden Gem Find. It's not an expensive game. Like, oh, I struck gold with this one. But just because I don't see them as often. I saw this and it was a different one. I looked at some reviews. A lot of people are saying it's a very cult classic kind of Hidden Gem game. So I went ahead and bought it for 12 bucks. I picked up uh, Army Men Real-Time Strategy for the GameCube. I love the Army Man games. I think they're fun. Um, not all of them, obviously. Most of them are actually pretty bad. But I like a few of them, and i would never heard of this one. And I just saw it there, and I was like, oh, a GameCube game for 12 bucks," Because GameCube games are not easy to just stumble on. And then when you do, in most places, they're just way overpriced. But uh, in my opinion, I know it's a Nintendo thing that they're so expensive. But uh, for 12 bucks, didn't want to pass it up. Um, it looks pretty fun. I looked it up. Um, it was also in pretty solid shape as well. Um, a little bit of scratching, but... I mean, really pretty solid there. A little bit of scratching there in the corners, but other than that, a really good disc. Um, haven't tested it out yet, but definitely down to... What's in this? Army Men Sarge's War. I wonder if that one's any good. On the back of the insert, don't you just miss, miss manuals? Uh, Army Men Sarge's War. I remember Army Men Sarge's... Uh, oh, what is it? On the N64 with the green cartridges? Um, anyway, so yeah, uh, oh, one more thing, I was, gonna say, I was about to say that's it. Also there, I finally found me a solid in shape 360 controller. It was 18 bucks, a little bit more than what I would probably want to spend on one of these, but they're becoming harder and harder to find in good shape, and this one was in really good shape. I've been using a bum out, um wired controller for a while now um and it kind of sucks but this one looks like it's pretty good shape it looks like it had some uh like battery corrosion in it um but they cleaned it up and they let me test it out there and it worked perfectly fine so i was cool with it but yeah there we go um yeah on the back here you can tell where like it looks like some kind of but the inside's perfectly clean. We put batteries in it. They let me test it. It was great. Um, so no issues there. I'll clean that right up. It's an easy fix with some alcohol. Um, but yeah, awesome. Finally glad to finally have another Xbox 3, a wireless 360 controller. Feel like I, it's been, ooh, feels like it's been forever since I've actually had one. Um, so that's cool. But uh, that's it. Um, ooh, that was one of my kind of book case, uh, Sleeves, bags, bags and boards. Mm. Uh, so yeah, a lot of fun stuff here. Um, ooh. I'm trying to get these all kind of like stood up. Well, that didn't work. It's that GameCube game, man. Yeah, either way. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. And that's it for this video. I've got one more that I'm going to film because I actually ended up getting these here in my hometown um, just uh, about a week ago. So I'm going to take a look at some stuff that I got uh, in my hometown and another video game video and then call it good. But um, thank you. If you liked the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. You do not have to if you don't want to, but I always appreciate anybody who does. And we'll catch you guys in the next video.